Yeah, I didn't want to do it, but I had to sue both of them to stop the harassment. So stay tuned. We'll sit here on the porch swing, have a cup of coffee, and I'll tell you what happened and why I had to sue. We'll be right back. Well, hello there. Welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. In this episode on the uh, porch swing chat, I'm going to discuss with you guys on uh, two lawsuits I had to file because of harassment stemming from one thing. So let's get into the story. As far as lawsuits go, I hate lawsuits. I hate to file a lawsuit. I don't like being sued. Who does? But it was, it had come to the point where they crossed the line and I had no choice to, but to file a criminal complaint, criminal charges, and a lawsuit against both. So what happened? Some time ago when uh, we were struggling, um, I had fell under ill health, I had a heart attack, had to have open heart surgery, and it was just months after uh, recovering from open heart surgery, a friend of ours asked us to come bring our rotting travel trailer up to their ranch, and we could uh, stay there as long as we needed. So I ended up having to get a pacemaker implanted also. Now this is all part of the story and the reason for how we ended up in the situation we had did with uh, getting harassed. <clears throat> we had, with a pacemaker, I had to be connected with the clinic because it was t uh, telecommunicated through the phone line, the data from a, a portable remote unit which monitors my pacemaker. So uh, we had to have a phone. Our friends who owned the ranch allowed us to stay there as long as we needed to get back on our feet. So we parked the RV next to a utility pole that had phone line accessibility. I called a phone company and they were able to hook a phone line up for us because of the Americans with Disabilities Act. They had to accommodate our needs. Even though we didn't have electricity, we had, uh, we had a phone and I needed the phone. And that's where the harassment started. <clears throat> so I'm con convalescing from the surgery. My doctors won't let me go to work. They wouldn't release me to go to work, so I had to apply for Social Security Disability. And of course you're denied uh, about three times, but I hired an attorney and they advocated for me. And I ended up getting Social Security Disability. Uh, I had no other choice, it couldn't work. I ended up um, stuck, yeah, but we were really nicely taken care of and uh, we had an opportunity to stay on this ranch and I evolved into caretaker as part of my therapy. It helped me get stronger and build my stamina because I'm not a type of person just to sit. Anyway, getting to the crux of the matter on why I had to sue these two uh, to stop the harassment. One day, about three months after we got our phone installed, the phone rang and here's how it went down. I answered the phone and the lady on the other end says, is this Gerald Hansen? I go, it is. And she goes, uh, you're in the rears for $31,000 for your credit card bill. Uh, I go, I am? I go, who is this? Uh, at the time, I didn't have a credit card. And I didn't even have a bank account uh, because, well, we were disengaged from society because of 
being homeless and finally trying to land on our feet and getting up. So I suspected, uh, I told the lady, I suspect fraud. I pulled out a piece of paper and this is the smartest thing I did right here. I pulled out a piece of paper and a pen and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't being frauded against because I don't have any money to pay anybody, let alone being defrauded. So uh, it was the collections department at this multinational bank that was trying to get a hold of this individual to pay this $31,000 debt on a credit card that they had. So once I went through the processes and I asked her, so what's, because I had to determine if this was truly fraud or if it was mistaken identity. Uh, because there's other Jerry Hansons out there and I was wondering, huh, interesting. So I asked her to spell the name on the account, asked her her phone number. Well, first of all, I asked her her name. What is your name? Who am I speaking to? What company are you representing? I wrote those down. I asked, uh, what is the phone number that I can reach you on? Um, and she gave me her phone number and I go, okay, what's a mailing address I can send correspondence to? And she gives me the mailing address. And then that's when I told her I suspect fraud because I needed to write down things. I wrote down her name, wrote down the date, and I wrote down the time. And once we got done with the conversation, I even wrote down the transcript of what she said and what I said. So that was very important to how this, how this ended. And stay tuned to the end of the story because some surprising things happen, interesting things happen. I went <clears throat> and determined that the, the, the name was spelled wrong, number one. She gave me the individual's birth date, wrote that down. Doesn't match my birth date. Of course, I'm not revealing any of my personal information to her. And then we tried to match the social security numbers, and she ended up giving me this individual's whole social security number, the entire number. I wrote that down too that was uh that was probably the wisest thing to do is write all this information down because then i had the data that i if something happened i didn't think into go any further than this i uh so her and i determined i'm okay, clearly not the party responsible for this debt so that was resolved i hung up the phone the next afternoon, the phone rang again. It was a different person from, we'll call it Dollar Bank, uh, from their collections department. It was a different person. She calls and I answer the phone. She goes, Gerald Hansen? And I go, yes. And she goes, you're in the rears for $31,000 on your credit card debt. When can we expect payment? <laughs> My answer to her was, never. Uh, a moment of silence on the other end of the phone, and she 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 responded saying, "Um, can you give me a good reason why not?" I still have the transcripts for all of these um, phone calls because <clears throat> I had to keep them, and I still keep them. They're in my safe. I got names, dates, times, and the phone numbers they called from, and then the transcript. So I said, I talked to another individual in your office yesterday, and we both determined I am not the party responsible for this debt. It's another Jerry Hansen. So take my name and number off your list and never call back again. Those are key words. Those are key words. Take my name and number off your list and never call again. Well, in our state, they have to comply. Also, I should add, in our state, uh, a, a creditor must try contacting you by mail at three, at least three times prior to calling. Since I'm not the party to this debt, I never received anything in the mail. Zilch. They just called me on the phone and started demanding, asked me, is this Gerald Hansen? I go, yes. Yeah, we, we want a payment of, uh, we want you to pay this debt off. And I was like, no, you, you, you can't. And they didn't even, uh, most, for the most part, they didn't even identify themselves. So let's break it down in brief um, uh, saying 36 
phone calls. 36 phone calls later, every single day, they would call demanding payment. They call me demanding payment on this account. And I started getting frustrated and they wouldn't stop calling. They kept calling. So I, I, was, at, I was at my wits end. I didn't know what to do. And then the 37th call was from a guy. Let's call him um, Evan. Evans are nice guys, but this guy, he was calling from a collection company out of Atlanta, Georgia. And he calls me and says, Gerald Hansen. I go, yes. And he goes, we uh, want to set up payment. And it's just like, uh, for your debt. And I was like, I know what this is about. They sent this bill to collections and they're trying to collect it. So I get his name. I get the phone number because I says, okay, what is your name? And he told me his name. I wrote it down, I, the date and time and the phone number. What was your phone number in case we lose the call and I can contact you? So he gives me the phone number and it's just like, okay, what is an address where I can send correspondence to? And he gives me the address. And then I go, okay. And the debt is how much? And he told me it was for $31,000. And who's the creditor? He goes, why all these questions? Is because I got to know if this is legit or not. I'm not sure who you are. I've never heard of you before. Well, it's from Dollar Bank. And it's like, okay, I know where this is coming from. I have already spoken uh, repeatedly to the people in the bank collection. And we had determined I am not the party responsible for this debt. It's another person. And so I want you to stop calling and stop harassing me and my family. And here's where he uh, crossed the line and broke the law. He said, I will call back and I will continue harassing you and harassing your family. I slammed the phone down. I was fuming. I'm mending a uh, broken heart here. Uh, I had just had open heart surgery and it's like I was in a fit. I was about to pass out because my heart rate was really getting up. It's like I had to calm down. What I did next was I called the sheriff's department and I filed criminal charges against that individual and against the dollar bank. I got a case number and the deputy said this is called telephonic harassment. You see, when you tell them to take your name and number off the list and never call back again, they're supposed to comply and never, ever call back again. So I called uh, the next step. I got that case uh, from uh, the sheriffs. I called my attorney that handled my social security disability and asked him this is what's going on what can i do and he goes well i don't handle that kind of claim however our head office in salem will handle it and so he gives me their phone number i call them and i talk to a paralegal and the paralegal forwards it on to one of the attorneys a couple of days later i ended up with a phone call talking to one of the attorneys and i explained to him this is what's going on this is the documentation i have i even have the spelling of the real guy's phone uh, name his uh, mailing address which was a p.o box in the same town i was getting my mail delivery through the same post office was delivering my mail to my street address while well, he had a p.o box there in that post office and i thought okay there's two similarities there's a we both live or get our mail in the same town and we both have the same similar name so i can understand how they're getting confused and how they think well maybe i'm the party but once you tell them take your name and number off the list and never come back again. They have to comply and seek other methods to get their money. That at least was the way it was in Oregon, in my state where I live, at the time that this whole episode was unfolding. 
So I, told, I gave all the stuff to my attorney. I uh, copied and mailed all the transcripts and everything I had on the two companies. And he goes, yeah, we've sued them before. I'll take care of it. So a uh, month goes by. I get a phone call from my attorney, and he wants me to give uh, their attorneys... Uh, the dollar bank attorneys and the credit bureau attorneys, they want me to give them the correct spelling of my name, my mailing address, and my residential address where I get my mail, my phone number, my date of birth, and my social security number. And I was really upset about having to share my social security number because at no time did I, uh, did I do it with anybody, but this was a court. It was uh, filed in U.S. District Court, and the case went to court. And once I submitted the uh, documented proof to their attorneys, attorneys for both companies seceded. They said, we got to pay this guy. He's truly in the right and we're in the wrong so they ended up paying me after my attorneys got their cut i wasn't after a cent i just wanted the harassment to stop and i really didn't want their money but and we ended up taking the money and we upgraded our living conditions because we were living in this old rv because we were homeless so i had no income i had no way to pay rent and our friends were gracious enough to allow us to stay rent free on their farm in our dwelling. So we did the best I could and I paid them back by doing what cleanup and maintenance I could do on the farm within my ability. So I did that and, every, and we took the money and we invested it. We had some friends from church that had this big fifth wheel and they, they wanted to sell us the fifth wheel because they wanted us to have better living conditions. So, um, yeah, we were able to upgrade our living conditions. Oh, that fifth wheel, the Prairie Schooner, it was 40 footer, had two slide outs. It was palatial, palatial in comparison to the RV we were living in. So <clears throat> we settled in and life was good. I was healing and the phone rings. Yeah, this is the story I wanted you guys to wait for. When we had settled the court case, the judge had said, if I receive a phone call from Dollar Bank or any other agency collecting money for Dollar Bank, that agency and the bank has to pay triple the amount of the settlement, the original settlement. So they have to pay, pay the settlement times two, so it's a triple fold, trifold the amount of money. Yes, the phone rang. And again, they asked, is this Gerald Hansen? I was like, yes. And they go, uh, we, have a, a, we have a case, uh, we're collecting uh, $31,000. Uh, for a credit card and I go and they were really vague uh, about they didn't want to tell me who they were who they worked for which is illegal and they didn't want to give me any information they just wanted to collect money and yet they didn't even send me anything by mail and it's just like okay I don't want to sue again I really don't want to sue again and these people don't know they don't know what I just went through so I, I, I finally got the gal's name and the phone number that I can contact her back again um, so I can uh, communicate with them. So she gave me that much. Uh, oh, I did get the address because I always say, is there an address where I can send correspondence to? And so she gave me that. And I go, okay, I need to speak to the owner the supervisor or the manager uh, at this time, I, I, I can't talk to you. I have to speak to one of them. She hangs up on me. She hangs up on me. And it's just like, what? 
okay, I got the phone number. So I call back and I, the person answering, the clerk answering the phones, I ask them, may I speak to the owner, supervisor, or manager, please? She goes, uh, one moment. So she puts me on hold and the, a nice, pleasant, a sounding young lady uh, gets on the phone and this credit uh, agency is in Florida at this time and explained to her listen uh, you guys got yourself in a pickle and I need to explain it to you unfortunately your agent who called me previous hung up on me and I was trying to explain to her that if this goes any farther uh, I have to sue you guys and so do I have your attention now <laughs> she goes yeah what's going on and I started explaining that I have to um, sue if this pursues any farther. What the deal is, is the here is my phone number you guys are calling. So she brings it up on the computer and she sees now sees the case in front of her. And I go, this is for a debt of $31,000, right? She goes, yeah. And this is for a Gerald Hansen. She goes, yes. And it's for Dollar Bank is the creditor. And she goes, yes. And I go, what happened was I got 36 phone calls from Dollar Bank harassed and repeatedly asked them to never call back because we had already determined with them that I wasn't a party responsible for the debt. And then they sent it to another collection agency and they threatened me and which was illegal and so i had to file police charges against both and then we took it to a district court i sued i won the lawsuit and the judge ordered that if any agent for the bank calls me again to collect money for this debt from that bank the bank gets penalized trifold the amount of the settlement and so does the company that's calling me so i'm trying to save you guys some money here i'm i'm trying to be nice about this i just want to find out how is it you guys are getting my phone number to call me to collect a debt that isn't even mine because obviously every time i say take my name and my number off your list and never call back again it's not working so now I'm curious how is it this other company got my number my phone number she goes well the phone company sells us a database that does a close match of the name a close match of a name and city Oh, lights go on. It's like, okay. So it's the phone company's fault because, and you guys don't know any better. You're just assuming that the person you're, the database is uh, giving you the phone number to, you just call and start demanding money cold without verifying that that person is even the person responsible for the debt did you know that that's illegal in our state you have opened yourself up not for only that lawsuit but you have opened yourself up for the major lawsuit that was already won before so i'm going to do you a favor i'm not going to sue you and what we're going to have to do is since it hasn't worked for me 37 times before to not uh, call this number I take the name and number off the list and never call again. Since that isn't working, how about if you leave my name on your list and leave my number on your list and put a great big flag on that account to tell anybody in the future, do not call this number under any circumstances. Do not call. She was happy to do so. Haven't had a phone call since. Yep, so that's the story. It was very trialing for me, for the family, have to uh, go through that. But creditors, especially this one particular bank, is scrupulous. I'm seeing all kinds of things in the news about illegal stuff they're doing. Uh, they're pulling all kinds of shenanigans. And so if they want to call me again, fine. 
I'll take the money and pay off my mortgage. <laughs> no problem. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something from this story. I don't know how the laws are in other states or even what the laws were in the state now because this is what it was when this occurred and it occurred not too long ago. Anyway, I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. This is Pine Meadows Hobby Farm with a porch swing chat on, um, I had to sue both of them to stop the harassment. Yeah. Give us a thumbs up, click that share button. Sharing my videos on your social media platforms helps us out. Leave a comment if you will. Remember, be safe and always be kind. I'll see you guys in the next adventure. Bye-bye now.